Well, it's the beginning of MSI. The group stage has kicked off officially, and North America is 2-0, which I think everyone expected. Um, you guys are going to go undefeated the rest of the time, right? Yeah, 10-0, baby. That's the dream. Congratulations. No, uh, of course, this coverage brought to you by Alienware. Let's talk a little bit about how today went. Uh, so today people were only saying... Alienware? Yes, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only Alienware. Well, I can't do this interview anymore. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, so uh, anyway, it's just the two. So you guys had the easy game today, or the easy day is what people were saying. Do you agree yeah. with that sentiment? No, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I think, you know, I, I think we, we did play the kind of like the two perceived weakest teams of the tournament. There's no telling like how a team's actually are, especially only after one day. But I would say, yeah, we had probably the easiest day possible. Um, but... At the same time, I wouldn't say our games was, were very close, so that's a good sign. Um, I think if we struggled, then it would be like, oh, I don't know how we're going to match up against the better teams, but I'm really confident. Even against the better teams, we're still going to win. Yeah. I mean, There were a lot of people that were kind of, I don't want to say flaming, but talking down TL after the PvP or PvB game and play-ins, uh, but then today, you know, we kind of saw the IG stuff. I, what's your general sense on them as a team? I think IG just played like probably one of the worst sets of their lives, like or sorry, one of the worst games of their lives. Um, like this guy was just running it down, and normally he's like a hard carry for the team. And uh, I mean, the team was just making a lot of mistakes. And even in the game that they had won against G2, they gave up three early kills. So like for a notoriously like good early game team, I think that's a pretty bad sign. Or I wouldn't even say it's a bad sign. I think like just it's a bad look. But um, the way I see it right now is early game is really volatile and every team is looking for plays early. And a lot of the time you're just taking coin flips where you're not really sure how the play is going to go out, go because any, like really there's so many variables that you can never calculate in league and you just go for it anyways. And you hope that your mechanics pan out or just by nature of getting the element of surprise on the enemy team, it, it works out. And um, so that's why you see like so much bloody games early on. Um, and I think IG is kind of like the embodiment of that playstyle. So I, I don't really know what to think with that. Like they almost lost to Fong Vu and like we stomped Fong, Fong Vu Buffalo. But um, yeah, the team, the tournament is really interesting. I think any team can beat anybody. Given that early game is so volatile and you know you said it's just a lot of coin flips, is that a good thing or a bad thing for TL given that a lot of people have said like early game is where TL tends to get behind and then somehow they, they bring it back late game? Uh, well, I think we're really comfortable being a little bit behind early, and we're probably one of the best teams, I'd say, in the world at playing from a deficit early on. Um, we have, like, we really practiced it a lot, and obviously the whole time we were working on improving our early game so we wouldn't have to be in those positions, but at the end of the day, like, you have to accept reality, and so we spend a lot of time just working on our plays from behind, and... Yeah, I mean, it really pays off since half of the games these days you're going to be behind early. But if you can play from ahead and stomp the game and you can play from behind and come back, that's like a really important asset to the team. So I would say it's pretty good for us. I mean, it's not like we don't snowball games. We usually, when we get leads, we, we stomp really fast. One of the things that I noticed, you did this interview with the Vietnamese broadcast just before this. I was watching it in the media room. And you said that during that giant pause in the G2 game, you were thinking about going on the analyst desk. Uh, was that would that involve you flying back to LA or how would that work? Oh my God! I just realized the analyst desk is in LA. Yes. Oh, that sucks. I was I didn't think about that at all. I was just like I'm so bored. I'm standing here, and like maybe you know maybe I'll just show up. Yes. Or like that not that I can decide whether or not I show up, but like it would be kind of interesting. Yes. But um, I, I think you could. No, it'd be great if you yeah. just storm your way onto yeah. the desk. If you're just yeah, like, I am yeah, going to exactly. show up. They can't stop me. No, never mind. That, you know, I didn't think through that idea very much. It was just a fleeting idea. Well, any chance for me to call that out on a on an interview? Um, you, uh, it's at, it's with his birthday. Did you guys do anything for him? Not really. Um, we have like a traditions at the AWTF where when someone's birthday. We bring him to the kitchen and like we celebrate with like cake or like something that we can all share, um, and force the person whose birthday it is to cut it up. But like this time, it was a bit weirder because it's our game day, and it was like we, we had our morning meeting and everyone was like happy birthday, Jake, and then we just moved on. So maybe we'll have a extended celebration later on. Okay. Like win. Like winning. Yeah. Uh, or well, after we win. 
What do you think of the other teams, and and what is going to happen with TL and them? What do we think? What do I think about what? Well, you got G two, IG, and SKT, right? So, what is the dynamic? What's your expectation for TL and those teams? Um, I don't know. I think we're a lot better than people think. That's for sure. I'm not sure if like we're like the clear favorites versus any team, but I think we're more than good enough to beat them pretty consistently. So like there's just some elements of our play that work really well against some of the stuff the other teams are doing where I don't know, like sometimes you just watch a team and you think like wow the way they play it's so it's so clean, it's so fast, it's so aggressive. But then if you really break it down, they're just taking enormous risks and it's paying off because the enemy team either isn't ready to punish it or they didn't even see it coming in the first place. So I mean if you if you're expecting it and you're ready to counterplay usually like you're just baiting them into a trap or like they're just going over aggressive without full information i think that's how those teams play a lot of the time not in skt but ig and g2 so anyways i'm pretty happy with the way the team is right now and i think we can definitely beat everyone in the tournament is there any of them that you consider like the final boss um the final boss i don't know usually faker is considered the final boss so Probably SKT, but realistically, it's probably actually IG. I just think that if SKT is in the tournament, they're the favorites, but I'm not sure how true that is. But G2 today looked pretty scary in their first game, at least. Yeah, they, I think G2 is really good as well. Um, I don't know. Every team has their ups and downs. That's pretty much it. I think a lot of our strengths are really downplayed, I guess, since NA has gotten burned so many times. I don't really blame the community at all. I just think we don't get any credit for some of the things that we're doing and pulling off in games because it's not as like dive focused, like mechanically outplay focused. But um, what's it called? Uh, it's it's totally fine to think that way since like none of the things that NA is good at really matters in the end if we just keep getting knocked out. So I think results will speak for themselves. Very good. Is there anything that you want to say to any of the fans out there? Um, no, pretty much. I think I just addressed like a lot of the stuff that I think is floating around, especially on social media and stuff like surrounding like our team and just the level of play that my team is at. Um, but I'm really confident, and I really appreciate all the fans who were like supportive and able to like stay up at super late at night or wake up really early in the morning to watch our games. So yeah, just shout outs to all you guys, and thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Have you been watching Game of Thrones? Yeah, I have. Did you figure out a way to do it from here. Yes, and yes, I, I on HBO, yes, indeed. And the season, you have any thoughts on it? I mean, I really enjoy watching Game of Thrones, but I also notice a lot of bad writing. Even though I'm not like a huge snob, I can definitely see a lot of everything people are talking about. You know, like it's really obvious. You know, you can be like ten years old. If you watch Game of Thrones, you you notice the stuff that's like that doesn't make any sense. But um, I still enjoy it. It's still entertaining. Just wanted to ask you. You can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here on my YouTube channel. You might be wondering where I am right now. While Team Liquid is in Ho Chi Minh City cutting their way through play-ins ahead of groups, Rodan and I are in Ha Long Bay in Vietnam because of a legend. A legend that says that somewhere out here among the hundreds and hundreds of limestone islets lies the secret to North America's international success. And because of that, I went to Alienware and they helped me commission a fleet of vessels to explore this bay and all the many, many islands within it to try to find the secret. Now I don't know if we'll be able to find it, if the legend is true, if it even exists, but if it does, we'll find it. We'll find it.